Uh, another thing to point out is that um, 11G also allows you to uh, model the um, attribute dimensionality from SBase. And you can bring that in as either a uh, uh, hierarchy or you can flatten it out so that you just have a columnar structure for your attribute dimensions. And you can use that in reporting. So I could look at only the, um, for this example, we're using marital status. And you can see your marital status is an attribute dimension. And then over here in our subject area, which the end user will, will see as they're developing a report, is they will see that they have the ability to look at their marital status in a similar way um, as they would in, in SBase. So what are the advantages of, of integrating SBase? I mean, what, what do we really get out of it that, um, that we wouldn't get out of an, another um, tool or another engine? Um, well, first of all, it's an, it's an Oracle product. They're working hard to integrate these two tools, um, OBI 11G and, and SBase. Um, integrating SBase provides you with the ability to federate your data. Um, combining your data, you've got possibly different levels that you're integrating your data, and ultimately when somebody is viewing a report built off this federated data, it's seamless, it's transparent to them uh, whether they're, they're going from one data source to another. So they could be going from a, um, an OLAP S-based database uh, of summarized aggregated data and in a single report drill down into detailed data and they would never know the difference. It would be seamless because their data is completely federated at that point. Um, they're, of course, going to leverage the OLAP aggregation speed and data storage capabilities that OLAP offers that um, you know, any of the um, ERP or any of the um, RDBMS structures or OLTP structures um, can't really provide. Um, of course, they'll be able to leverage uh, metadata from other from, from S-based data, so, um, or any of the EPM applications for that matter. Um, so if you have a, a Hyperion planning uh, implementation in place right now, you've got your, your budgeting or your forecasting data in there, well great, pull that into, um, into your OB11G model, and now you're able to actually reflect that, federate that with some of your other data, present that to your end users in a nice, clean, transparent uh, dashboard or report. Um, write back capability. Uh, now this one might take a little bit of work, but I want to throw it out there uh, for people just to let you know that you could actually create an OBI report where an individual has the ability to input data and write that back um, to your, your S-based queue. Um, and, and of course, for, for those users who aren't aware, um, you know, S-based is really used a lot of times for what-if scenarios. If um, if I change a forecast number from, from, from X to Y, uh, what's my result? I want to see that right away reflected in my current um, data model. And um, so SBase provides that for you. And then, of course, with the integration of OBI, the ability to write back to the cube, um, that can transpire. You can actually get that integration. And uh, another question we get when we throw that out is, well, if, if I'm running that what-if scenario from OBI, and I need to really quickly calc my, my cube to you know, aggregate those totals up or whatnot, how can I do that? You can get all that done from within OBI 11G um, reporting and dashboarding with a new action framework. The new action framework would, would allow you to point back to the um, SBase server and actually run a calculation. Okay? Um, and then, of course, one of the big ploys right now um, from, from Oracle to be released um, sometime next year is that with OBI EE, um, the pre-built analytic application solutions, um, Oracle's actually looking at providing the ability to create an S-based cube based off of the, um, the data warehouse that's um, built through the OBI pre-built analytics. And uh, that's something that came from, um, I think the individual's name was Alar Thomas, uh, who's actually an engineer over at uh, Oracle for the BI and S-Base side, and he presented that at Oracle Open World this year. So a uh, lot of the great advantages there for S-Base. Um, now we move on to HFM a little bit, uh, a lot more hardcore um, financial application here, um, but with HFM integration as a data source, um, you're able to pull in a lot of the HFM, HFM data um, right off the bat. The integration can transpire directly in the, um, the RPD when you're modeling your when you're doing your metadata modeling. 
Okay. Um, some of the, the key features are that you, you get your dimensional columns, you're able to do your, um, your outline total drilling, member selection, custom groups. So you're pretty much bringing in um, the majority of custom um, and all features from HFM. Um, and it works really well in answers or what's referred to as analysis now in 11G. Um, I typically bring this up to some of our clients when we're, when we're discussing an, an HFM uh, integration with OBI um, simply because there are some features that aren't coming over with HFM and it's, it's good to point these out. Um, so the period offset function for those that are familiar with, with HFM, um, you know, that, that's going to help determine some of the, um, uh, the offsets and um, some of the base functions, the common children and some of the UDFs that you might develop in HFM don't immediately come across in the, um, the import of that data source. But OBI does provide a function okay, that can uh, be leveraged in the logical layer of your RPD model. Uh, it's called evaluate predicate. Okay? And um, it, can allow, it can allow you to leverage some of those functions um, within your logical layer. So um, it's, it's not a, a, a one-to-one but that functionality is still still there for you to use. So just model a little differently. Okay. So what are some reasons why someone would 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 an organization integrate HFM uh, with OBI? And um, you know HFM has a little bit of reporting itself, um, but when you integrate it with OBI 11G, where all of your other dashboarding and reporting um, might exist, you're able to now create dashboards for your executive team. Maybe you're just providing a financial dashboard at a high level. Uh, your accounting team, um, you're giving them visibility to you know, what's happening on the days leading up to your close, you know, what's happening on day six, et cetera. Um, if, if we want to break a report down and say, okay, if, if I've got my list of entities here, um, where, where are they? Where are they at in this, in this process? Um, you know, has the consolidation taken place yet, et cetera? So you can actually answer some, some of these questions um, through this integration with HFM. Again, if we're tying this in with, with S-Space, um, maybe a, a different department's using it in S-Space Cube and you've got this all locked in one nice financial dashboard, um, you know, it's a centralized location um, where you're able to get this, uh, this analysis accomplished. Okay, and then of course just other real quick uses for, for wanting or desiring to integrate HFM. Um, you can look at, um, you know, financial consolidation numbers, um, a big one here is looking at your elimination data. Okay, um, now it, let it be known that clearly Oracle has a product out there that did, they've recently released called the Oracle Hyperion Financial Management Close um, product. But um, you know, one thing to think about here, you know, that's a completely separate product, and I'm not trying to turn anyone off of that product. But what's to say that if you do an evaluation of the two products, that is Hyperion Financial um, Close Management and um, looking at the integration between HFM and OBI that's, um, you know, the integration between OBI 11G um, wouldn't be a better fit for your organization. So just something to think about for those uh, organizations that are currently leveraging HFM and or currently use or own Oracle um, Business Intelligence or looking to, to acquire Oracle BI 11G. And so here's an example of um, you know some of the, the process management scorecarding you know so we can take a look at location here and we can kind of see what's going on um, over here of course we can set up point of view so we have filter uh, capabilities on our dashboards and and so this is just a real quick look at look at HFM data as it would be presented to the end user just kind of some process management metrics that we're looking at so we can we can see a breakout of you know how many entities or or at a particular location, um, you know, average number of days from, from close to, to actually submitting, um, et cetera. Okay. And so for, for our technical users, a very similar interface to what we're seeing from integrating um, Oracle S-Base. Um, we've got a three-step wizard, and this is in the, the RPD for Oracle BI 11G. And just three steps to make sure you, you point to where your, your HFM installation is, which server you're pointing at, um, picking your correct HFM application, and then just pulling it in. 
and I won't get into the details of actually modeling the HFM application. And like I mentioned um, toward the beginning of this webinar, there's just so much information, and I think what we're going to do is we're eventually going to host another um, webinar on this on a similar topic, but get into a lot more detail. Um, so we might pick just HFM, we might just pick S-Base, and we'll do a, a deeper dive into it. Um, that way we can really see what's going on behind the scenes and how this integrates well. Okay. So a, another way to get at that HFM data um, is actually through leveraging the S-Base Analytics link, or, or EAL, which is provided by um, Oracle as well. And um, Basically, the, uh, the Oracle S-Base Analytics link, uh, it enables the delivery of effective management and uh, analytic reporting to a broad user community. Um, it leverages S-Base um, by implementing S-Base queues based on HFM applications. Um, usually, this, this would take a long time to, to build a transpire. I think the old tool took um, you know, several hours uh, to do something similar. Um, but ultimately, EAL, or Analytics Link, analytics link. It actually creates an S-Base cube. Now, because S-Base Analytics Link is really specific towards HFM and S-Base, they've really fine-tuned this. So once you set this up, you can, you can basically pull data out real time. Okay? And uh, so now instead of you know, taking weeks to really get this together, um, you know, that, that speed to delivery is, is just so much faster. And here's just kind of a, a real quick graphical look at, at what's going on with um, EAL, or S-Base Analytics Link. So we're basically going from our HFM application, um, passing through using Oracle S-Base Analytics Link as a pass-through, and it's actually building out our S-Base cube for us, okay? Modeling it with the um, Oracle um, best practices, of course, and, it's, and it's, it's putting it together in such a way that it's immediately available for, for end user use. Okay. 